Hi, my name is Whitney Pricer. I'm a postdoc here in the Wood Lab at University of Washington. And today I'm going to be walking you through how to stain the soft bodied helmets, the cestodes, trematodes, and um, sometimes acanthocephalons. So it's really important to stain these parasites because it lets you look at their internal morphology, which is something you couldn't do by looking at an unstained specimen. So it really lets you look at the different organs, like the testes, the ovary, the vitellaria. These organs you would not be able to see without staining, or at least not easily. It also allows you to bring things into contrast with each other, so it helps you measure things better too, and measurements are very important for identification. So first, whenever we start the staining process, we're going to put each specimen inside a tube with stain, or inside a, a petri dish with stain. These are gonna sit overnight, uh, larger specimens need more time in the stain. Smaller specimens really only need a few hours, but they can go longer without being harmed. I would keep um, probably a maximum about 12 to 15 hours total for stain. If it's a little more, a little less, it's okay. Sometimes up to 24 hours for really big specimens. After that, we'll de-stain them because they'll be overstained having sit in the stain overnight. We de-stain them to bring them back to a nice, light, pretty pink color so we can see them easily. We'll then stop the de-staining process. We'll clear them, which makes them see-through so that we can see all the way through them, be able to look at all the organs inside. And then we mount them and Canada balsam where they'll be preserved for the next, hopefully, hundreds of years. So today, first, we're gonna start with the staining. And then, again, these will sit overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and start the de-staining process. So to make the stain, we add one part glacial acetic acid with one part distilled water, and then we add carmine powder until it all dissolves. We'll have make a saturated solution. I usually add a little bit more than what dissolves. And then I heat that over uh, 95 to 100 degrees Celsius for about 15 minutes, and then I pour that solution into a jar. I can reuse the stain across multiple specimens as long as it stays clean. And then again, when you go to add it to the specimens, I use a little bit of ethanol with the carmine mix in order to stay in the specimens. So we have um, specimens in a tube. These are stored in ethanol. Um, if you do it fresh, there are some steps I can talk about later in order to get them ready for this. But these were collected from dead fish, and so they're stored in ethanol. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to label the Petri dish with the specimen number. Just something so that way I know I can tell each petri dish apart. And then because these specimens were stored in ethanol, I don't need to add ethanol to my stain. If the specimens are fresh, I would do about half ethanol, half stain. But because these have been stored in ethanol, they're already mostly preserved. And so I'll just take a small amount of ethanol along with the specimens and put it in the petri dish. to add enough stain to cover the entire specimen. Sometimes the specimens float for a little bit, and so when that happens, you're going to gently push them down. I have a wooden stick here. I'm just going to gently push them down until it stops floating. If they continue to float for a long time, what you can do is I break off a small piece of the stick and I drop it on top of the specimen and so it holds it weighted down overnight. Put the cover on it and then that's it for the next 12 hours. All right, so the specimens have stayed anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. We did it overnight. So now we're going to start the process of de-staining. And when the specimens are in the stain overnight, they overstain. So we're going to de-stain them so they're not a dark red color and they turn to a nice light pink where we can see a lot of their internal morphology. 
We're going to stop the desaining process. We have to stop it or else it would keep going. And then we're going to dehydrate the specimens and mount them. We're going to destain the specimens using an acid alcohol. This is two parts hydrochloric acid to 99 parts 70% ethanol. There's a little bit of wiggle room as to how much acid you include. Do you want it a little stronger or a little weaker? But generally, this is what I choose to be safe. So I take my acid alcohol and I get a new petri dish bottom. I think it's easier to put the acid alcohol in a new petri dish and then transfer the specimen over. You can also remove the stain from your current petri dish and add acid alcohol to it. The stain can be reused as long as it's not too dirty. And this is why it's very important to make sure that you get all the specimens whenever you're transferring them over. I write on the top of my petri dish how many specimens I have in this, and that way I know that I get all of them and I don't leave any behind. If you leave some behind, again, you're missing specimens for your analysis, and also you can they pop up later in the stain in areas where they shouldn't. So I'm going to add my acid alcohol to an empty petri dish bottom. Just enough to cover the specimens. And then I'm going to use a wooden applicator stick so I don't damage the specimens. And I'm going to move it over. After moving it over, I run through the petri dish with the stain in it just to make sure I didn't leave any pieces of parasites behind. And then I cover this, and I'll reuse the stain, so I'll empty the stain back into the container. It's very important to closely monitor the specimens as they're destaining. Larger specimens will take longer. Smaller specimens won't take as long to destain. Larger specimens will also release more stain as they're destaining. This can cloud your water and make it difficult to see how far the destaining process has gone. So you can remove the destaining solution and add fresh if your, your destaining solution gets too pink or dark red. So now that the specimen has destained enough that it's a nice light pink color, we're going to stop the destaining with sodium bicarbonate solution. This is just distilled water with a saturated amount of uh, sodium bicarbonate. I'm going to add just a little spritz. I do it for about, about five to 10 seconds with a small amount coming out. If you do too much, you can burn the specimens and they'll turn a dark brown. Not pretty, not easy to see. So now that I added that, I'll swirl it a little bit and then I'll let it sit for about five to 10 minutes. Five minutes for smaller specimens, 10 minutes for the larger specimens. So after the specimens have been sitting in a sodium bicarbonate solution, after they stop the destaining for about five to 10 minutes, I'm going to take the specimens out and put it back either in its original tube or a new one with 70% ethanol. And it can stay in the 75% or 70% ethanol um, indefinitely until you're ready to dehydrate and mount. So after the specimens have been taken out of the sodium bicarbonate and acid alcohol solutions, they're back in their tubes of 70%. We're going to do the dehydration steps where we take them from 70% ethanol to 100% ethanol. First, again, since they're in 70%, we don't need to do anything further, but then we'll move them into 80%. They'll stay in 80% for 15 minutes at least. After that, they'll go into 95% ethanol for 15 minutes. Then after that, they'll go into two steps of 100. So 100% ethanol for 15 minutes, and then a second 100% ethanol for 15 minutes. If at any point you need to stop before you mount, a good place to stop is the 70 or 80%. Once they start going into 95 and 100%, you wanna start mounting them that same day. So if you can't mount them right away, leave them in the 70 or 80% and then start the 95 and 100% when you're ready to mount. You can use separate petri dishes for this, or you can also use it in their tube. And if you do that, make sure you use a scope and a pipette, and then you can make sure you don't suck up any parasites when you're taking out the old ethanol and replacing it with the new.
after we've done the dehydration steps and they're in their final 100% step after 15 minutes, what I like to do to make it easier on myself is I fill a dish with 100% ethanol. Again, just enough to cover the specimens. And then I'll transfer the specimens over using a pipette into this. This is not a second dehydration step or a third dehydration step. This is just an area to hold the specimens so they're out of the tube and they're easier to grab when it comes to mounting. So I've labeled a slide with a specimen number and all the information that's on the parasite or on the parasite label. I'm going to fill a small dish, or not fill, but I'm going to put a little bit of this xylene. Xylene is the clearing agent. You put parasite specimens into it before you mount and it clears them. It makes them um, transparent so you can see all the way through them. So I'm going to put enough in here to be able to cover the specimens. This is toxic. Do not get this on your skin. Do not breathe it in. This is why we're doing this in the hood. It is better, while you can reuse xylene sometimes, it is better to do the clearing in fresh xylene because the specimens don't float. When you move the specimens from the ethanol into the xylene, uh, sometimes they can float. You want to make sure you push the specimens down so they don't float because if they do float, they get air bubbled inside that turns the specimen black and you can no longer see any morphology. Sometimes the black bubbles go away. Most of the time they don't, so you don't want to ruin your specimens. So I'll move the specimens from the ethanol to the xylene. I have the xylene petri just labeled just to make sure I don't mix them up. So once they're in the xylene, they usually clear right away pretty immediate. You want to make sure you keep the xylene covered at all times because the xylene evaporates very quickly and you don't want to dry out your specimens. So I have it covered over there and I'm going to take my slide now. We have Canada Balsam. This is one of the best mounting agents. There are alternatives though. So you use Canada Balsam. The Canada Balsam, when you get it, comes uh, diluted with xylene, which makes it thinner and it makes it you're able to uh, pipette it onto the slide and it will dry thick and solid. If your balsam is too thick, you can add more xylene to it. If your balsam is too thin, you can let it air out a bit with the lid off and that will thicken it up. So I'm going to use the dropper, which this is another container of xylene, but it's used xylene. I'll make sure I get it all out. And I'm going to suck up some of the balsam. And I'm going to place a small amount on the slide in the center of the slide. You want to be careful not to apply too much because that'll make your whole slide sticky and very messy. Though it is difficult to get the exact right amount, so a little bit extra is okay. I'm going to move my slide onto the microscope and I'm going to use my stick again and pick up the specimens and put them onto the slide. You want to put generally um, your really best specimens, each one on their own slide. And then if you have, I like to put, if I have specimens that are messed up or partial specimens, I put them on multiple on one slide. But if the specimens are really good, I try to give them their own slide. This one, I'm putting two specimens on one slide. Now I'm going to, under the, comp, or under the stereoscope, I'm going to arrange them to make sure they are laid flat. Um, whenever they're in the xylene, that does harden them. So if they're bent, I can't really unbend them at this stage, but I can Make sure they're lying flat on the slide. Make sure they're uh, not at an angle in the balsam. I'm going to put a cover slip on top. You want to lay your cover slip on one end first. Don't just drop it on. You're going to get a lot of air bubbles. You want to start on one end, and then you'll gently bring it down, and then just let it fall. The balsam will fill the slide. I like to help it along a little bit by taking the blunt non-sticky end of a uh, wooden stick and just gently pushing it. If the specimens are 
rolled, or if they're kind of moved off the center of the side, you can use the stick to kind of push the liquid underneath and make sure the specimens are in a good position. You want to make sure the balsam covers the entire cover slip underneath. You want to make sure there's no air pockets or um, sections of the cover slip that aren't on top of the balsam. If you have a few small bubbles, that's okay. The bubbles find their way out. If you have any large bubbles, um, you can either do the slide again or you can try to push your specimens around so they're not near the large bubbles so they won't obscure your view. So after you've mounted your specimen, the slides can go on a slide warmer and dry for two to three weeks, or they can also dry out on a countertop or even in a hood. You wanna make sure they dry, in that case, for at least three to four weeks. Balsam takes a long time to dry, and if it's not fully dry, your specimens can move and get messed up. After that point, after they're fully dry, I store them in slide boxes, but I make sure they're stored facing up. So they should be stored facing like this, because if you store them sideways, they might still run, especially if you get um, very hot temperatures. It can melt the balsam a little bit and make it run. So make sure they dry properly and you store them upright. Thank you for joining me, and I hope this video will help you make very beautiful parasite slides.